Hi there, folks. Good to see you again. Um, lots of good work uh, this week, and um, some of it got me pretty pumped, and some of it provoked uh, a few questions. And uh, I want to share three reflections that uh, come out of my um, consideration of all the interaction this week. Uh, the first picks up on a particular thread uh, that started in module one and carried on into module two. And uh, it goes something like this. The problems are too big. The alternatives are too small and limited to have much impact. And besides the level of control and wealth concentration in the elites, it's just too powerful. So this isn't a, a new, sim it's not a new formulation. Uh, what is powerful, and in the context of neoliberal capitalism as a system, its circular logic makes a lot of sense in some ways. But there are risks in the narrative. And I want to try and illustrate them by a personal story. Uh, if you'll allow me, I guess you don't have much choice. Uh, when my first grandchild arrived and the reality of climate breakdown fully exploded into my consciousness, the power of the circular logic uh, and it induced it, or it, it was part of inducing what became a pretty deep depression. The questions in my mind would not cease. They'd go round and round. Is there no way out? What can I do? When my children, grandchildren 20 years from now ask me what I did do, will I have an answer? If not, you know, how will I live with myself? Um, but if I put my time into helping something change that seems hopeless, why would I bother? What does it matter? The grieving and the anguish actually went on for months. Now, fortunately, my mother had some old uh, advice that she used uh, in troubled times, which if you can't go over it, you can't go under it, you can't go around it, then well, buddy, just have to go through it. And I did. And this pain uh, shaped kind of a slow moving decision to keep my eyes uh, wide open to kind of reality and resolve that I would do whatever I could do as strategically as I was able. And out of that emerged kind of a I call it a, I guess, a peaceful determination. So these questions of, you know, and the grief can, can still sneak up on me. And when this happens, I often will go to the words of Wendell Berry. Uh, he's a great American poet and essayist and farmer and thinker. Uh, he put it uh, this way protest that endures, I think, he said, is moved by a hope far more modest, modest than that of public success, namely the hope of preserving qualities in one's own heart and spirit that would be destroyed by acquiescence. My second reflection is very much related to this first one. It picks up on the assertion that models and niche innovations are not much relevance to advancing systems change. They may be inspiring, they may generate real benefits, uh, but the reach is just too limited uh, uh, in relationship to the scale of change required. Well, you know, perhaps, perhaps not. Uh, well, we can't really know, can we? Consider the millions in the streets. Consider the mounting economic and social impacts from inequality and climate breakdown. Consider the crescendo of voices pressing for action on multiple fronts as a result of all this. You know, you can look at Norway just as one example of a state that took and has divested $1 trillion out, uh, out of the fossil fuel industry. Um, 
and there's six trillion in divestment. So these are just all examples, but they're landscape level factors that are in the process of disrupting the core assumptions of and the stability of the system writ large. In terms of niche innovations that have evolved into, uh, into models, we know that they often emerge um, uh, where the systems are already failing people and communities. We know models have been spread successfully and achieved significant impacts. We know that the present process almost always requires a mobilized advocacy aimed at transforming the, the norms, the rules, the legislation and practices of existing systems. So is it not possible that based on this convergence uh, of, uh, of, 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 of the pressures coming from the landscape and this growing emergence of models and innovation that we might have a chance to advance systems change. Uh, we don't know. We can't fully know. But neither can we know that the future is sealed because the problems are too big and the alternatives too marginal. What we do know is the multiple crises uh, are shaking uh, the roots of capitalism and its logic. What we do know is the pain is gonna deepen. Uh, what we can anticipate is that the crisis, as the crisis deepens, alternatives that have a track record will be sought out. And I would say it is already happening. So watch for it as you go through the rest of this course. But so out of this, I just want to make a suggestion to those that are maybe, you know, struggling with these kinds of questions I'm raising. Uh, just put aside this notion of the limitation of models for the moment. Uh, because from a learning point of view, uh, I think if you're curious, you ask questions, for example, to what extent is a particular innovation of being diffused and the impacts uh, scaled, what, what factors supported or thwarted the progress being made or not? Where there is some scale uh, and success, but, but progress is being threatened uh, uh, or, uh, or stalled. What, what's going on? What, what allies exist within the community or sector or region or government jurisdiction? How might they be brought to bear? What are the dots that need to be connected in order, in order to organize on a more powerful basis the advocacy that's needed? Now, I want to say this, this just doesn't mean that the big picture visions are not useful as one way of countering the neoliberal narrative or inspiring action. But I would say it's far from sufficient. I would ask you to consider the words penned by a hero of mine, a dissident, often imprisoned, a visionary playwright, a man who fought for fundamental system change. Uh, his, he became the first uh, president of Czechoslovakia. Václav Havel had this to say, vision is not enough. It must be combined with venture. It is not enough to stair up the stairs. We must step up the stairs. So the last thing I want to uh, raise up is my appreciation for the thoughtfulness uh, I encountered in the reflection exercise. It, I got pretty pumped. I, but you know, I'd love to see more posts. My, my, my own personal experience is that, you know, trying to sort out my thinking through writing, uh, uh, it's a, it makes a huge contribution for me to internalizing what I'm being exposed to uh, better and, and to clarify uh, the questions I have. So uh, 
I want to give a shout out for those people that did uh, did uh, write a reflection for the first time. I encourage you to continue to do that and more of you to do so. Uh, and I want to talk a little, just in closing then what what people chose to write about was was very interesting. Most prominent among the reflections, given the nature of the exercise and how it was set out, uh, was reflections on land use solutions to reverse climate change. Second were the reflections on the application of, of, of alternative land tenures like the Community Land Trust uh, to secure affordable housing and the assembling of land to provide affordable and secure land tenure uh, um, uh, for those uh, pursuing agroecological methods of food production. Uh, a third was the incredible and rapid transformation of the lowest plateau from uh, you know, from a, a denuded zone to something that was thriving. Uh, and, and, and I also just want to mention a creative uh, contribution by Bob Morrison uh, that sets out quite a creative way, a series of ideas triggered uh, by putting the land tax together and most, uh, the idea and the Georgism uh, with uh, some of the land use solutions and draw down and put them side by side and apply them to quite different areas. Anyway, uh, very interesting. But, but what, we, what got me most pumped up was an exchange that was prompted uh, by the contribution of Lazarus Angelou uh, on, uh, on the land use solutions to reverse climate change and putting it together with the lowest plateau. That prompted ex an exchange between the two of us and uh, you should go take a look. It's pretty interesting. Uh, and it's a good example, and, and, and a warming one for me, to how uh, this massive open online course uh, can be leveraged into a vehicle not only for learning and for peer uh, contributions to each other, but actually uh, opening up uh, avenues uh, of collaboration, uh, and in this case, opening up the possibility for collaboration around a new educational initiative. So thank you for, for all your participation this week. Uh, enjoy your exploration of the food module uh, coming up. You'll see lots of linkages to module one and two and, uh, and prepare to be uh, introduced to the largest mass movement in the world uh, based uh, uh, on food sovereignty. Uh, Bia Campesina kind of moves and is linked from the local to the global. Uh, anyway, over 200 million members. Uh, it, uh, you know, it's a lot to take heart about. So we'll talk to you later uh, and enjoy your week. And, and thanks for all your contributions this week. Bye for now. <laughs>